In this presentation, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the same problems that we looked at in the past, in the previous section, or in the previous presentation. But we're going to talk about some other ways that you can use in order to determine the linear equation. So in order to be able to do these methods, you want to know how to plug in values for their indicated variable, know how to solve basic equations, be able to graph equations using slope-intercept form, understanding the idea of what it means to be slope in terms of a graph, as well as what it means to be a y-intercept. You want to be able to identify the coordinates of points in the rectangular coordinate system, and you want to understand how to add, subtract, and multiply fractions. So some of the methods that we're going to talk about will work for all of the equations that we're, or all of the types of problems that we're going to look at. Others, you will find that um, they have their own special cases, and so you may not be able to use all of these methods on those. But we're going to explore some different ones and go through them on each problem. So one of the first methods that you can use in order to solve or in order to come up with an equation is you don't necessarily need to know the point-slope form. If you know the slope-intercept form, then that is enough in order to come up with an equation. And I'm pretty sure that we all know slope-intercept form by now. So our slope-intercept form, remember, is y equals mx plus b. So what we're going to do here is remember that the slope is the slope of the line, b is the y-intercept of the line, and from there x and y are points that satisfy the line, or make a true statement when you plug it in. So what we're going to do is instead of plugging in negative 1 and 3 in for x1, y1, we're going to plug those in for x and y. So what we get when we do this is I know my slope is 4. I have an x coordinate of negative 1, so I can plug that in for x. And I have a y coordinate of 3, which means that I can plug that in for y. So the only thing that we have here is I need to know what the y-intercept is. So all I need to do is go ahead and solve for b. My first step to solve for b is to go ahead and multiply 4 times negative 1. We get negative 4 plus b. And in order to solve for b, I need to add 4 to both sides. We get 7 equals b. Now, one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that these problems will always say, write your answer in slope-intercept form. Remember that we are looking for the equation of a line, and our equation of the line needs to look like this. So the downside to using this is that it's going to be a multi-step problem. All I've done is find b, I still need to write my equation. So that means that I want to take my 7 and my 4 and plug it back into our slope-intercept form. So when we do that, we get y equals 4x plus 7 and you're done. So note that if you use this method, make sure that you do not stop as when you solve for b. Make sure that you take that and plug it back into the formula. Another method that you can use, and this is the one that it all depends on what your equation looks like. Another method that you can use is graphing. So in order to do this using graphing, what we want to do, and I always recommend that you do this on graph paper, 
not by hand. What you're going to do is you're going to start by plotting the point that you are given. So my first step is I want to plot negative 1, 3, which means I want to go to the left one and up 3. Now just like on the previous method that we used in order to solve this, Again, I want to find what is the y-intercept. So that means I need to move from my current point to the y-axis using the slope. So since our slope is 4, and I'm going to go ahead and go over 1, I want to move to the right. So I'm going to say that my denominator is 1 to the right, and that means that my numerator is going to be 4 up. We have our denominator, we are moving in the positive direction, we have a positive slope, that means I want my top to also move in the positive direction. So from here, we want to start at our starting point, which is now negative 1, 3. I want to move according to my slope, which tells me I want to go up 4. And to the right, 1. We should end up right here on our y-axis. And so now what is the coordinate of the y-intercept? Well, the coordinate of the y-intercept is we're not going left or right, we're on the y-axis. We are going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up. And thus my y-intercept is 0, 7. Okay, so now let's take that and go ahead and plug it into our equation. So again, we have y equals, our slope was 4, that was given to us, and now b is equal to 7. Now as far as graphing, the only time this is not a viable candidate for ways to find the equation of the line is if your y-intercept is not a nice point. If it's a fraction, then it's very hard to determine exactly where it is on the y-axis. Okay, so that takes care of the first example. Let's go through a couple other ones to show you some other things that we can do. Okay, as you recall, this one did not have a nice y-intercept, it was a fraction. And so I'm not going to use graphing on this one. The first thing that we can do is we can go ahead and use the slope-intercept form and plug in our values. So again, we have y equals mx plus b. We want to go ahead and plug in negative 3 fourths for m. We have the x-coordinate of our point is negative 2, and we have the y-coordinate is negative 5, leaving me with just b. So we can go ahead and do exactly what we did in the previous problem. We can go ahead and start by multiplying. So I'm going to put this as negative 2 over 1, and I want to multiply negative 3 over 4 times negative 2. Again, I'm going to cancel the 2 and 4. They are both divisible by 2, giving me 1 and 2. I'm also going to cancel out my negatives and then multiply straight across. So we get negative 5 equals 3 over 2 plus b. From there, I want to go ahead and subtract 3 over 2 from both sides. So when I subtract 3 over 2, again remember that when we subtract fractions, we do want common denominators. So I'm going to come off to the side and do my work. We have negative 5 over 1 minus 
3 over 2. I need a common denominator of 2, which means I need to multiply my first fraction by 2 on the bottom as well as 2 on the top. We get negative 10 over 2 minus 3 over 2, which is equal to negative 13 over 2. So that is my value for B. And we're not done. We still need to go ahead and write our equation in slope-intercept form. My equation is going to be y equals negative 3 over 4 x minus b, which is 13 over 2. And there is your equation. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Now I'm going to go back and do this one again. And um, you can do this either using slope-intercept form or you can do this using point-slope form. I'm going to do it using point-slope form because one of the challenges on this problem is the fact that the slope is a fraction. So when we set up our formula for point-slope form before, we got y plus 5 equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. So we'll start with that. So one of the things that I can do on this is remember that when we had fractions in our problems, one of the first things we wanted to do was clear the fractions. In order to do that, I want to multiply by the least common denominator. And since 4 is our only denominator here, that means I want to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So let's go ahead and start with that. If I multiply the right side of my equation by 4, my 4's cancel, leaving me with just negative 3 times x plus 2. On the right side, I need to multiply the whole thing by 4, or each term by 4. And we get 4y plus 20. I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative 3. This will give me 4y plus 20 equals negative 3x minus 6. So from here, I want to go ahead and move my, solve for y, we want to move the constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, leaving me with 4y, my 20s cancel, equals negative 3x minus 26. And then now we want to divide by 4 again. On the left, my 4's cancel, leaving me with just y. Negative 3 over 4, I can't do anything with that, so I will leave it alone. And 26 over 4, I can simplify that. I can divide both of these numbers by 2, giving me minus 13 over 2. Our equation is in slope-intercept form, and we're done. So if it all depends on what you struggle with. If you struggle with remembering the formula, then you may want to use um, slope-intercept form and solve for b. Um, you can also do the same thing in terms of the fractions, even when you're working in slope-intercept form. If your main struggle is working with fractions, then you can always go ahead and multiply by the LCD in order to clear them and make the problem a little bit easier to solve that way.
So the last one that I want to look at is the problem that said through 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 6. This one again, you can use slope-intercept form, but I want to do this graphically because here's the thing, you don't necessarily need to know your formula for slope. So if we go ahead and look at this graphically, I'm going to start by graphing my two points. We have 4, negative 3, that is 4 to the right, and 3 down. We have negative 2, 6. And again, it's better to do this on graph paper. Negative 2, 6 is going to be 2 to the left and 6 up. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to find the slope. So I want to know how far do I need to go left or right, up and down, between these two points. So if we start at 4, negative 3 and try to get to 2, negative 6, we are going to want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 up, that is my rise, and my run is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left, which means that we get a denominator of negative 6. I should go ahead and reduce my fraction. We can divide the top and the bottom by 3, giving me 3 over 2, and it's negative. So, so far, for our equation, we have our slope. I know that this is going to be negative 3 over 2, x, and now I just need to figure out what y is. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for this one. Um, whether you want to start with the top point or the bottom point, let's go ahead and move according to the slope in order to figure out where the y-intercept will be. So I'm going to start with the bottom point. It'll take us a little bit longer to get there. But if we move using the bottom point, I want to go 3 up, 1, 2, 3, and 2 to the left. Again, I want to go, we're not at the y-axis yet, so I want to go 3 up, 1, 2, 3, and 2 to the left. So we should end up right here on the y-axis. If you started with the top point and moved according to the slope, what you would have wanted to do was go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2, 1, 2. So it doesn't matter how you do this, just make sure that you're always moving towards your y-axis. So from here, what are the coordinates of this point? Well, this point is 0, 3 which tells me that B is equal to 3, and we have the equation of our line. So note that some of these problems, you can do them without having to do a lot of algebra computations. You can do them visually, not all the time, but there are other methods that you can use, and all of these, I would say, are considered acceptable methods. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and gives you some other ideas as far as how these equations are related and what we can do with the information given. So if you like these methods better, go ahead and try the problems that are in C.2 or C.5. Again, 
you can also use these alternative methods as a check step. All right, that takes care of linear equations in two variables.